It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Mac OS Ken joins Renee and Andy to talk about the latest from Apple. Will we get a Retina MacBook Air? I'm counting on it. We'll find out why I shouldn't be next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 349, recorded May 7th, 2013. NFC, we! MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm but provide self-help services at your direction, such as affordable business and personal documents you can trust. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code MBW to receive $10 off at checkout. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle.com. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK5. Let me just sip a little bit of coffee. <laughs> oh, it's time for MACBREAK Weekly! The show, <laughs> the show that covers your Macintosh needs. That, my friends, that is an Andy and Notco caught in the wild. <laughs> we'll watch as the Andy and Notco swiftly beards his prey. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Leo. Now, we're using coffee surrounded by air quotes today, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> okay, there you Yes, go. it's the Jackie Gleason coffee. <laughs> yes. Oh, how sweet it is. Good. Somebody put coffee in my thermos. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you, Andy. Also with us, of course, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. Hi, Leo. Can I start the air hashtag? Can that be a thing? Oh, I love Let's it. Start. Instead of this, we'll do this. Air hashtag. Hashtag. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I love it. Also, okay. look, it's Mac OS Ken. Ken Ray is here from the Mac OS Ken podcast. Good to see you, Ken. Good to see you, Leo. Oh, now you're not going to be all serious, are you? Well, no, here, here. Okay. That's is that what it is? <laughs> there we go. No, it's, that's it. I'll Live that. long and that's groovy. Well, <laughs> you see, I accidentally combined uh, Pulp Fiction and Star Trek there. So, yeah. <laughs> that's good. You're welcome. <laughs> and for those listening on audio, you're just going to have to imagine a bunch of strange hand gestures because really there's no point in describing them <laughs> at this point. But join in and make your own. <laughs> make your own. So the hashtag is a good one. So it's uh, like the peace sign with another peace sign across it. And that's that's air hashtag. I like it's made it. history, Leo. You it, just let it be. Let it go forward from this day forth that it was Renee Ritchie who invented the hashtag air quote. When they come to tar and feather somebody, it shall be me. <laughs> and, the, and the fact that it is also identical to an Antarctic resistance movement that's responsible <laughs> for most of the denial of service attacks. That's just accidental, isn't it, Renee? <laughs> Coincidence. Oh, that, that you've now sort of co-opted Leo into your little, you know, mad bit for, uh, for Antarctic independence. That's fine. No, that's good. That's good. You're ruining everything in Notco. <laughs> oh, oh, I am, because the resources of Antarctica belong to the world, not just some little splinter group who thinks it would be a great Wi-Fi-free zone in which to practice their ham radio. Okay, I I, I get it. Two-meter radio, very oh, important. Oh, wait a minute. It's been safety. invented. What is it? There oh, it is. There's somebody doing it. How did you even find that, Chad? There's all these people doing the, <laughs> the air hashtag. I guess Renee did not invent Look, David Bowie invented it, it looks like. I'm humiliated and upset. As ABC News invented it. Wow. Donald Trump invented it. What did you search for? <laughs> air hashtag. I bet. I, I, I think. I, I think Donald Trump is something. hair hashtag. Actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you mean air hotness or Sophia blush? <laughs> First of all, it's air hostess, <laughs> oh, and second of all, it's Sophia Bush. But yeah, okay. But well, other than that, yeah. Uh, sorry. All right, let's get to the news. You know, there's a big war going on. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, be about the uh, iOS delay, which is a complete rumor and basically fabricated this iOS 7 delay. And uh, who was it that wrote a real, I thought a really good article um, about how this is just 
typical bogosity in the Mac press that would they just every as long as it's rumors they're going to jump on it. Was it who do you, who do you remember? Was, who, actually, was it Ars it was Technica? A, it was actually a bogus um, Bloomberg headline, wasn't it? It was something. It started like, with Bloomberg, right? But I mean, the headline was bogus. If you go like seven or eight. So the headline was something like Johnny Ive risks uh, delay of iOS 7 with, you know, all the changes he's making. Right. And then I think it was seven or eight paragraphs in, the Bloomberg piece said, oh, they're still expecting to ship it when they were planning on shipping it. Yeah. Okay. And then, <laughs> so, but then so somebody didn't read the whole article and just read the headline. And every right. Mac rumor mill, including, I think, us, said, oh, is OS 7 delayed? I, they're pulling OS 10 engineers off. Is it not going to make it? Right. Yeah, I think the only thing that they said, I want to say in the Bloomberg piece, was that internal deadlines are being moved a little bit. Which, I mean, what I said on Mac OS Ken was, it reminded me of the thing from the Money Pit, where, you know, one of the characters says, you are almost late. And the other <laughs> one says, yes, in, in the U.S. we have a term for that. We call it on time. <laughs> You're supposed to be early. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and and Digitimes is in there and everybody's in there. So. I, Apple's Ive, this is the article from Bloomberg, Apple's Ive seen risking iOS 7 delay on software overhaul. Um, and I, you know, I read that Apple high stakes gamble on iOS revamp. <laughs> but it's all just, there's no content in here. This is all just, this should be an opinion piece. It's, it's conflation. It's a lot of things that are kind of shoved together. I mean, Apple is a company that runs headlong towards their deadlines every year. And they almost barely make it every year. And it's the minute that that stops happening that I'm going to worry. Yeah. Because they have you know limited resources. They put all their engineers on it. They don't sleep. They pull people off OS X. That's fine. But they're they're racing hard for the finish line. That's what that's that's their one job. I can't yeah. think of a time this hasn't happened. Exactly. And, and it points to the structure of Apple where they don't, they're not a bunch of competing divisions that would never like loan out people because the printer division wants the monitor division not to do well. And both the monitor and the printer division right. don't want the CPU guys to get an advantage because they're all fighting for resources. It really is. It really does come across as one big glom of talented people. And Apple is more than willing to move those people around to wherever the force is, is uh, more effectively used. Um, so... Are we in agreement that iOS 7 will be at WWDC in June? Yes. That it will ship yeah. on time? I say Well, so. they haven't said when it's going to ship yet, so it's got to ship on time. Well, I mean, I, I think <laughs> right. I think that it'll I think that it'll ship in the time frame that everyone expects it to. I don't yeah. if 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 anybody's expecting Apple not to ship a new phone sometime by the end of the year and for that new phone not to be capable of running a new operating system that'll ship before the end of the year. Welcome to the brand new world of knowing about Apple. Uh, our planet is mostly nitrogen based, but you can get by on the oxygen that we do have. Uh, I don't think anybody's expecting anything different. Yeah, I agree with Andy completely. They, it's a new management team, which always has challenges. Scott Forstall is gone. Johnny Ive is in charge of user interface now. Uh, they're reportedly flattening things out. They're not making it Windows Metro flat, which is one of the rumors, but you know, supposedly it's becoming a little bit more refined, a little bit flatter. And all of these things take time. You have a limited amount of resources and it's it's going to ship. I don't I don't think Apple would have done WWDC, you know, invitations at all at this point if they didn't have their products in line. Well, that, that would be freak, not that doing freak people out. That yeah, did. not doing WWDC would be <laughs> Well, not 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 doing WWDC, but was it what, 3 years ago, 4 years ago that it got moved to August? Right. It was? Right. That would have freaked people out, but I mean if it had to be done, they would have gone ahead and done it. They've done a lot this year to freak people out. So really, moving <laughs> WWDC would only be one more thing. So, it, go ahead. It's, I was saying it's a story that resulted in stories about the stories that resulted in stories about those. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the Gizmodo story that followed it saying, saying uh, um, Bloomberg says <laughs> uh, it's going to be delayed, which they didn't even really say. Well, it's credit where yeah, it's due. John Gruber did a piece on Branch. Uh, we had a discussion on Branch, and he said that he heard that OS X engineers were being pulled off of you know OS X to go work on iOS, and that you know that usually means that they're not hitting internal deadlines or that they're you know trying to get it complete on time. And now John pa John Pachowski from the Wall Street Journal actually spoke to people inside Apple. He didn't name them, but he had sources listed, and they said that's pretty much true. But it's shipping on time and. That's the story. The stuff that came out around that is the insanity. But the core right. story was that they're putting everything, the weight of the company behind it, and they're going to get it done on time. Right. 
In fact, the, uh, the, we, the, we've coined it. I don't know who gets credit for this. A new word, deforestalization. That was Pachowski's <laughs> article. <laughs> what does that symbol mean? Can I don't you know unplug and replug your computer? Unplug and replug my computer. Yeah, I'm not showing anything of interest. Uh, I, I, I hope that like uh, you, 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 you go through this life achieving things and having a point of view. <laughs> I just hope that I never create a situation where someone would use de as a positive thing. Oh, we're finally going to de-Laporte twit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that that's, that's a pretty much signal that uh, your life is over. Well, he, well, he's, well uh, at, to be fair, it, at, it certainly means that he's, he's been Trotskied. He yes. is, <laughs> at least for, yes. for, for, for maybe for reasons that of that of that he must take ownership of for reasons that have nothing to do with him and him just doing his job as best he can he is i don't know it, that, i think that, he that did it, move to it, mexico it, city didn't he yeah, he stays yeah <laughs> beware of people with axes you know, it's... <laughs> no we're just kidding what did happen to scott forestall does he have another he's with andy rubin and steven sanofsky in some little troika somewhere <laughs> planning to take over the Blogging. world i'm a blogger now i'm inventing things like the air hashtag the new version of iPhoto can remove faces from company <laughs> pictures with only a keystroke. Ironically, we think it's the best joke. We're calling we're the, the company the Ken Burns effect is the Joseph Stalin effect. Ironically, uh, Android is, uh, phones are the ones that have that removal feature built in. <laughs> uh, maybe there's something going on there. That was for Andy Rubin's benefit. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, so I, I wanted to start with that because uh, I think we've talked a little bit about the notion there might be a delay. We've certainly talked about the flattening of iOS 7, the re the anti the removal of the skewmorph skew some of the skewmorphism. I'm glad like I don't like have to say that word anymore. It's but it's, it's such an overused word. People apply it to mean anything that's a rich texture or you know has any sort of elaborate design, and it really. Yes, there's some WebOS was a fantastic skeuomorphism with the cards and the stacks. The stuff in iOS is just heavily textured design that people right. complain about. Right. Um, yeah. So we'll just say a little less torn notebook paper, a little less green felt. Yeah. Well, a, a little less in, in Project One Way uh, terms, less wickety whack. It's just, <laughs> you know, I mean, no more flair. Yeah. You 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 you. T you take a you take a glance at the at the screen for half a second. You glance away. What is that you remember seeing? Then delete that thing from the from the user interface. You'll probably be on your way to something good. The thing that's interesting about all these stuff is originally this stuff had a purpose. So if you were just waking up in the morning or you were drunk and stumbling for your phone and you opened it up and you were on an app and you you have no idea what app you last used on your phone. But if it was green felt, you know instantly you were in Game Center and you weren't fumbling for the contacts trying to call somebody from Game Center. Or you knew immediately you were in Find My Friends because it was leather. So it did help orient you. The only thing is it was so ostentatious. It... No, and I, I, I've got me I'm... thinking about, oh, boy, I wound up in the leather district of my iPhone last night. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I, I exactly got, that. I got skew morphic. I'm blue. And... <laughs> but otherwise, all screens start to look alike. And that's something they have to make sure they keep when they're – they don't want to throw that out with the skew morphic baby water. Gives a new, new meaning to lickable interface. There was, there is one other thing though. I mean, we can kind of laugh about how about the skeuomorphism now because we're what five or six years into iOS or into the iPhone. Um, initially, things like that were probably great for getting people on board because think of how crappy you know your interface was on uh, like Windows. Well, what was it called? Windows Microsoft Mobile. Microsoft ME or Mike, okay, Windows, Windows Mobile. Yeah, Windows think, Mobile. Think about like those kinds of things. I mean, they, they looked really bad and were kind of confusing to the average consumer. But the average consumer, like somebody who had not, you know, played with technology at all before, could pick up something like Newsstand or the iBookstore, which I know came later. But I mean, I mean, having that real world analog on screen, I think was probably helpful. Oh, now, yeah, absolutely. And, and it goes back to the earliest like, days of the Xerox Star and the first Macintoshes with file folders and things that looked like pieces of paper, little curled corners. All of those things were very valuable, especially the first desktop interfaces. And think about how important so, Delicious Monster was to all this sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, the beautiful uh, book, 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 book shelf yeah, that they I, had. And, I mean, to, to, be, to be fair, a lot of, I, I don't think, I think that iTunes is, if there's one app that Apple can really fix and have a really quick impact by just fixing one thing, I think it would be the iTunes music player. Because that's one area in which it really can be, it, it, it really is kind of stuck in scrolling lists and drilling down where this is a consumer app. This is a, a this is a, a consumer stereo that should be a little bit easier to simply navigate through by by visual feel. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you shouldn't want to strip. You shouldn't need to strip things down too. You, you, you can't strip yeah. things down too badly, correctly. Yeah. And, and, and ironically, 
Mike Which Mattis, who did Delicious Monster, is now doing the chat heads at Facebook. Yeah, that's right. Hmm, that, is that Along a step down? <laughs> well, it's a change no, of his style. That's, that's, that's well, it's, it's not. It's not a great feature. I mean, I think, but I, I think that the, what, what we've all be complaining about is that if the chat heads were like in a Rolodex, <laughs> and you have to like <laughs> do you move your thumb like this to scroll that through the Rolodex? Yeah, you know. No, I like it. Those little balloon heads show up. Uh, on your screen, and you can you can throw them <laughs> like Angry Birds with your Facebook friends. <laughs> it really does. It's just a matter of time before they actually gamify that. That would be kind of fun. Actually, awesome. I'd like that. Yeah, uh, we're gonna take a break. We're talking about Macintosh. There is some Mac news. There is there's more rumor news. Uh, we'll talk about uh, some Steve Jobs news. Well, really, kind of more like tips of the hat to Steve Jobs. And yes, we'll play that uh, that phone ad. Mm. Galaxy S4 at uh, the senior senior graduation party that basically implies that <laughs> iPhones are for gray beards. We play the Windows Phone one too, Leo. With That's a fun one too. Pipe. The war. Yeah. yeah, we got. We'll just play a bunch of ads. Awesome. But, but first, let me do a real ad. How about that for LegalZoom.com? LegalZoom. You you probably heard of them. It's not a law firm. But it is exactly what you want if you want to do a trademark, a patent, a will. If you want to incorporate. You don't really need a law firm. And if you're a startup, for instance, you probably can't afford a law firm. If you're a blogger that wants to protect your brand, I mean, you're not going to spend thousands of dollars to get a trademark. On the other hand, LegalZoom makes it easy and affordable because a lot of the legal work that you need to do is really just paperwork. With LegalZoom.com, businesses can form an LLC, as we did, for 99 bucks. By the way, that was in 2005, and, and it still holds. It's the same LLC incorporation that we use today. Uh, you can also do chapter, uh, a uh, not chapter, a um, S or C corp if you want. For $99. If you want to do a will, $69. LegalZoom.com. Register your trademark. That's what Chad was going to do. $169. Bucks. Was going to do. Did I you did do it. it? Did you finally do it? Uh-huh. You finished it? Uh, well, I no, still need to send in one more thing. Yeah, but see? all the hard work is done. And it's a Legal questionnaire. Zoom, yes, yes. Online. Yes. Was it easy? Yeah, it was pretty easy. It's, it's mailing the, the right. example in this slow and, and the hard stuff is all the stuff that's required by the government, not by Legal Zoom. Right. And you they have to walk do that. and they help you. They they walk you through like are you you know, the, this is what you need to, to focus account. on. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. right? This is what you need to focus on. This is this is what this word means. Are sometimes. you trademarking OMG Chad? Correct. Oh, that's so smart. Correct. Not that anybody would want it. Right, but let's, <laughs> I, mean, I mean. Unless you're named Chad, I guess you could. But let's say Nickelodeon comes out with a character OMG Chad. You'd be pissed. I'd, I would, and I'd be out. now you have out. recourse. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have recourse. By the way, there are times when you're doing this and you may say, oh, gosh, I could do that. But what if I had a question? Who do I ask? There is this is new since I use LegalZoom. They have now the LegalZoom uh, legal plan attorneys. They've uh, picked attorneys in almost every state. They've got profiles and unedited reviews, so you could pick that attorney. They have pre-negotiated rates, very affordable. So those, you know, if some questions come up. Well, should I be a Delaware or a California corp? That was one I had. I just guessed. I flipped a coin. Now you can actually ask somebody at a very affordable, pre-negotiated price. LegalZoom really is, for a lot of what you would do, everything you need. And I highly recommend it. Uh, it's really no surprise LegalZoom's been around for more than a decade now. People have been using it to get their legal affairs in order. If you haven't got a will and you've got kids, you do not want the courts to decide what happens to your kids. You really need to try this. LegalZoom.com. Now, just to, in order to... Uh, to get a little credit for the show, if you we're going to give you ten bucks if you use our offer code MBW, ten bucks off your first purchase. So uh, that makes it a little bit more affordable. I understand it's not a thousand dollars, but uh, it's a way of us thanking you for saying, "I heard it on Mac Break Weekly." Start your business, protect your family today with LegalZoom.com. They're not a law firm; they're self-help services at your specific direction. Or you could speak to a legal plan attorney to get your questions answered and get ongoing advice. To receive a special thank you. For using LegalZoom through Twit, make sure you enter the offer code MBW in the referral box at checkout, and we'll take 10 bucks off. LegalZoom.com, use the offer code MBW, and we thank them so much for their support. You know what? I, I hear from them uh, that Mac Break uh, users have been very responsive. I think there are a lot of you with blogs and businesses and so forth. A uh, good group for uh, LegalZoom. Take advantage of this. 
Um, all right, moving right along. We're talking about uh, Macintoshes with uh, Renee Ritchie of iMore.com, Andy Anako of the Chicago Sun-Times, and uh, Ken Ray of Mac OS Ken. So which ad will you, do you want to see first? You want to see... You, you have them both up there, uh, Chad? What do you got first for us? Um, which ads do you want to We got the Nokia pull? and the Galaxy S4 ad. Oh, gotcha. Okay. There's two ads. There's the one where it's the wedding party. Yeah, let, let me show... And the bride's family... It, bride's side is all iPhone. The groom... Or no, it's the groom's side is all iPhone. The bride's side is all Android. And then the waiters, the two waiters, are going, why do they fight with their win giant Windows phones? <laughs> Taking videos of it all. And she says the most apt thing, I think they like to. <laughs> um, here, I, I can't find that one right now. No, well, let's do this. this so that you've seen that right. one. And, they, and, and there's guys using Siri to go, find karate, karate. <laughs> it's in the middle of the fight. Uh, it's really quite funny. But the one that's a little insulting is this one. This is a uh, high school graduation pool party, a Samsung Galaxy S4 ad. And this is the full hey app. Hey, Scott. Great graduation party, sweetie. What are you doing? Uh, I'm taking a picture of these ribs with my new GS4. Can't do that with an iPhone. Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> I smell the ribs. He <laughs> says, smell it. Come on, you don't be a This actually is kind of cool. They do the... There's a feature on the phone that lets you do... These ribs are insane. Multiple mm -hmm. images. He's eating. Okay, now wait a minute. This is a stop. This. Gotta be kidding me. So this is a special, uh, special thing. When you're eating ribs, you can wave at the phone to answer it. Right. It can also sense ribs <laughs> within a. You have to have Bluetooth enabled, but within an 18 inch proximity. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. Now, now watch the guy who looks like. Oh wow! Here, I want to share. Can I share too? No, yours doesn't do that. Wow. Yes, it does. By the way, wait a minute. Stop it. This has always annoyed me. And, and that's one thing they do in the uh, in the Nokia ad where they do the bleep and they pass pictures from one to the other. The iPhone person says, one trick pony. iPhone had this first with Bump, right? That's what Bump does. Very complicatedly, but yeah, it does third that. Third-party third solution. Yeah. It's, but okay, but still, it's not something anybody ever and, does and, anyway. And, exactly. And, and to be fair, and step one is say, okay, uh, first, do you have Bump installed? Okay, go <laughs> to the App Store, uh, do a search. Uh, you know. Yeah, but, but on yeah, no, this I one, to, you have to I launch I, the Galaxy. I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't even though I, even though I do have like phones with NFC, I almost never share things via uh, via bumping. So it's an odd thing to want to do. I tried to bump BBM contacts on my Z10 all last week, and I think it worked once. Yeah. <laughs> See, the the great thing is that when you don't have NFC, that gives you an excuse. Say, I'll email you that photo. What? Why don't you give me your email address, Ooh. young lady? Yes. 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 Just show us how to get to you. Samsung is anti-players. Exactly. <laughs> um. So yeah, here, it's, it's, isn't it? Isn't it always really funny when like a, 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 a an ad exec who's at least fifty three and probably 50, uh, 43 to fifty three is doing an ad about how unhip and <laughs> a certain product is and how oh good heavens. Well, watch because here comes what's this? What's that? Like, the guy who does the is it Corona or Cuervo ads? The richest guy. What most is interesting he? man? The, the most, most interesting, interesting man in the world. Man. He's in this. He's in this. Watch. Yeah. He's not too clue. He's kind of clued clued out though. No, yours doesn't do that. Wow. Oh, he, oh that. see, now that's cool. Yeah, you nailed it. I nailed something. Oh. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're mostly showing up. Here he is, here he is, here he is, though. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Exactly. Oh, gotta what go are we doing back. With these phones? Go back, because this nailed guy is, this is, this something. is what they want to say. So some Pause smartphones it. are smarter than other smartphones. Exactly. What are we doing with these phones? Call your phone with my phone. You're old, that's why. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ooh, Tiffany texted. Oh, I got uh, it. Okay, that's enough. I'm so tired of this. But Samsung's done this before, and they're really now, they're pulling out all the stops. The iPhone is for old people. Clueless. Yeah, one of Apple's biggest advantages is the coolness factor, is the brand image. And Samsung really intelligently is attacking that. They're trying to make it look like your father's phone, your mother's phone, right. the, the iSheep phone in the lineup. And, you know, it's an effective way to attack Apple. I guess it is. They've got yeah, in a... Still yeah. It's it's it really isn't it's that's the sort of strategy that you have when you are profoundly number two. You have a good product that's not getting enough respect. That's the sort of like bulldog stuff that you resort to. Samsung is not number two anywhere. It really, I mean, it really is a market leader. The, the, the again, the if if I'm I am this as I always often say, I am the sort of person who is always when I'm in a public place, I can't help but try to notice what kind of phone people are using. And I see Samsung Galaxy S3s everywhere. Sometimes I see them even more more prevalent 
differently than the iPhone. So once you get into that sort of position, an ad like this makes you look very cheap and stupid. Yeah, well, you you know? did, it's hitting somebody when they're down. And it also provokes people to like uh, people like us to take a look at this ad and saying, yeah, you're not really you're not really demonstrating features that are endemic to this hardware. You're you're you're, you're showing off features that are essentially apps that probably right. exist in various forms on every phone, certainly right. the iPhone with the best software library. And secondly, let's point out that uh, all that stuff is like comes preloaded on the on the S4, leaving you with very little, <laughs> much, much less space uh, on your internal storage uh, for for apps you actually do want. So television doesn't work. It just doesn't work. We, just doesn't we, work. we, we, we got you talking. <laughs> we, we got we got us talking about you, Samsung. Good for you. Uh, and part, that ahead. part where you don't have enough of the storage, I mean, that might actually affect consumers. But the rest of what you're talking about, I mean, you're talking like this ad was aimed at us and it's not. I mean, the people that this ad is aimed at aren't watching MacBreak Weekly. Right. Because they, they more than likely a long time ago, chose a platform. Either that or they walked in, they, you know, just took the first free phone that was offered to them. And next time they're going to choose a platform. Right. Oh, that's I mean, a so good that's, point. That's yeah. who the ad's but for. Yeah, I, I I just worry about what happens in the long term. I, I do think that this strategy, it works when you're on your way up. It's not a great strategy when a company needs to maintain or keep going up. Uh, once yeah. once it reaches a certain well, level, it it does it does create mm -hmm. the perception that we're not we're not telling you that our product is very good. We're telling you that the other product is very bad. That's a that's a paucity of information that if you want to uh, really uh, maintain consumers, it does remind me a little bit of the Apple. Uh, I'm a Mac. I'm a PC ads though, right? Same same idea there. Well, Apple was well, way was, was a way significant part of the market when they aired those commercials. This is the Windows one is more egregious because it gives Apple and Samsung such immense brand exposure that some people don't even realize it's a Windows phone commercial. <laughs> yeah. This one is a little bit better, but it still provides Apple an incredible amount of intel of of advertising for free on Samsung. We we time. did we did talk on Twitter about that Nokia ad, and uh, that's a really good example of an ad that doesn't in any way sell the Nokia phone, but merely yeah. says, "See those other guys, they're jerks." <laughs> and doesn't mention one feature of the Nokia yeah. phone. And I don't know if that's enough to get somebody to a real person to buy a phone. Yeah, My you, mom you thought it. it was an Apple commercial because of the guy's giant chest with the Apple on it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was a, an ad guy that I talked to who had like about uh, 13 years in the, in the business uh, last year was tell, well, telling me about the, these type of broad approaches. And he said that the advice that he gives to clients is is a variation of the, the, the old job interview uh, advice, which is you should dress for the job you want, not for the job that you actually oh, have. So if you want to be a market leader, you should make the sort of commercials that someone who has an indomitably positive uh, uh, position there's, in the, in the industry yeah. should create. I just like it because it's a funny ad. So he's it's taking a great it's, a fun, it's a funny commercial, right? It's an SNL skit. Yeah, or a Daily Show thing. Yeah. Search one trick pony. Aren't you a little young? No, she didn't say icon? Siri. <laughs> you want to go? I sheep, copy bots. Auto correct this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. I love that. I don't know why. <laughs> Although you, you got you, you got to be fair, Leo. Now every time I do NFC, I always go wee. wee. Right, I to somebody. Wee. It makes it more fun. Oh, <laughs> that shrimp going to waste! That's what kills me about this commercial. I know that shrimp was beautiful. You think if they knew about the Nokia Lumia, they'd stop fighting all the time? I don't know. I think they nope. kind of like fighting. <laughs> but they but they don't know about the Nokia Lumia because it's fourth gen, fourth <laughs> class phone. <laughs> Choice. Yeah, and they're not going to know about the Nokia Numia based on based on this commercial either. Maybe though that there are there are people who say I'm just so sick of the uh, religious wars. I just want to opt out. That might do be they know about them? Like I, my mom doesn't know about those wars. She just sees the Apple commercial with the camera and thinks it's a nice camera. Exactly. That commercial works. The one where the That's iPhone picture where commercial. they just take a lot of pictures with an iPhone and say the number one camera in the world is the iPhone. That's a yeah. very effective ad. It's heartwarming. Yeah. Web 6264 in the chat room says, why aren't we talking about iOS 6 validation for FIPS 140-2? That's the real story. I'm just too upset There's six about people it. Who I can't care talk about it. about it yet. God. I don't want to fly off the handle. I know. I know. We're trying to talk about lightweight stuff because we don't want to think about the real stuff. It's FIPS certified. There, we talked about it. Okay, it's done. Awesome for enterprise. Awesome for security. Is it? Big deal? Samsung uh, still can't I, get its safe platform out. No, uh, isn't Knox delayed? I think again. Yep. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> well, I mean, after all those commercials, it's a little. Oh, didn't didn't the uh, who was it? The army or somebody? The Defense Department just approve iPhones and uh, Galaxies for uh, 
for no, use? They're, um, government they use. They approve galaxies. They're about to pr approve the iPhone. About is what to they approve, said, yeah. Like in the next couple of weeks. Basically, that's just surrender. <laughs> that's just waving the white flag. We can't help it. Everybody's bringing these damn things in. We might as well let them use them. The top smartphone OEMs, according to Comscore, and its mobile lens uh, in the U.S., Apple up 2.7 points from December to March. Now 39% of the total U.S. smartphone market. Hardware sales, 39%. Uh, That's a record high share. So you might think that the iPhone is completely dominant. In fact, it is more dominant than it's ever been, and it's still only 39%. Samsung Samsung, not Android, Samsung, 21.7%, HTC, 9%, Motorola, 8 LG, 6.8. I'm glad you, you brought that chart up. I, I'm curious, Andy, does that change your thought about that ad? Because you're right, worldwide, we keep hearing how Samsung is dominating, but Samsung is dominating worldwide. That's a, that's a very U.S.-centric ad that you're talking about. I mean, they are still theoretically on their way up here compared to the iPhone. If you add all the Androids together, it's 52%. But I don't think people see it that way anymore. I think really people see it as buying an, a Samsung, right? Thanks to mm -hmm. Samsung. Or but, uh, or buying a Motorola Droid. Or, it's mm -hmm. co-opted the brand. Yeah. That, 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 is, that is a good point. When I, when I speak of that, about that such, I, I speak about uh, advertising strategies as I understand them to be. And mm -hmm. you don't... You, that's usually a strategy that a company abandons sooner or later and they go back to when they feel threatened. Um, there is a uh, there was another uh, speaking to uh, another analyst. This was okay. This was two years ago, so it might not be still the common thinking. But there was another analyst who uses that kind of as not not as a way to decide where a company is, but basically as a, one of the metrics he puts into his own little spreadsheet to figure out what is the attitude of this company towards their place in the industry. What is their plan for the next two years? Uh, good companies either are completely silent or they start to speak about what they're what they're up to. Bad companies who need to stall for time often. That's the, that becomes their entire corporate messaging. Look at what these other guys are doing. Aren't they stupid? Aren't they foolish? According to uh, another study, the iPhone is three times more reliable than Samsung Galaxy phones. I've always, I never trust these studies, though. You know. Yeah. I hear plenty of people who have trouble with either platform. I don't know if I don't really know. If there's Part a, of the problem is it's coming from uh, somebody who fixes phones, right. right? Or somebody who, yeah, and and a lot of people who have problems with their iPhones go to the Apple store. Right. Or go to Apple, and I don't think Apple is saying, oh, man, have we had a world of hurt with the iPhone? Let's go tell <laughs> the people over there. You fix. Nobody Although knows. There was, it's a mystery. There's an interesting, there was an interesting article in, um, I'm personally... I'm personally kind of worried about what happens to my iPhone after my one year. I didn't buy Apple Care for my iPhone. I didn't buy the insurance for it because I haven't had a problem with my iPhone up to this point. And so you go the first month when you can still buy it and nothing happens. And so you roll the dice, right? Um, there was a, there was an article in Business Week this week uh, about a guy who said that he is on his third iPhone, uh, iPhone five, excuse me. I saw and that article. And he kept I'm having also trouble on with my the third iPhone button. five. Yeah. Hmm. And it kind of it kind of worries me because you know at the end of the year Apple's been great you know and it's not you know I didn't break it I didn't drop it in the toilet I didn't do anything to it it's stuff that keeps happening with the iPhone and Apple's been fantastic about replacing it uh, both times it's needed replacing I'm curious like is that third phone has Foxconn worked out the kinks and so it's going to be fine from now on or am I going to you know uh, a, a month after my one year going to come up against something where internally something just went, you know, kludgy again, and now it's 99 bucks to get it uh, repaired or more to get it replaced. So, I mean, all of which is to say, I mean, the study that you're talking about, I feel certain if you're talking about like Bob's fix it, they're seeing a lot more from Samsung than they are from Apple because, you know, Apple's Samsung doesn't doing. have a store that you can walk into right, right now. Right. Apple, right. you know, probably you go to the place where you bought your iPhone and you say, I agree. Mm. <laughs> I think we just don't know. Yeah. I think we just don't know. Did you get, I got the new 614 with a improved speakerphone profile? Yep. What does it do? <laughs> I got it last <laughs> night on my iPhone. Someone comes to your house, takes the speaker out of your iPhone, puts a brand new speaker in, it's much louder, much better. No, it's 11 and a half megabytes. Yeah. 6.1.4. Uh, and all it says is updated audio profile for speakerphone. I don't know what it... I, I, have you played with the speakerphone to see if it makes a difference? I don't have very good hearing. I'm not a, I'm the opposite of a golden ears, but I couldn't tell much of a difference. I can't tell the difference, yeah. 
All right. Um, a listener of mine wrote in and said that he had a friend who had had a problem with her iPhone several times and that this took care of it ah, as far good. as the speaker goes. So it's a bug they, fix. They were actually, apparently, although it's a bug fix that they didn't identify for a while. Right. Again, this is according to somebody who wrote to me, and I appreciate him writing to me, but I can't say I was talking to a guy in Cupertino because I wasn't. Right. Um, but he says that there were actually so many problems that some people were getting their iPhones replaced and now it turns out it's a software issue. Oops. Wow. That's that's true. I mean, there were issues where the, the phone would only work on speakerphone. It wouldn't work through the earpiece or vice versa. And they were swapping out phones for a while to deal with it. Um, wow. And if this fixes that, then that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And now they have a lot of phones that actually work that they took in uh, repair. Mm -hmm. Real quick check on our Tim Cook uh, auction. It was 600000 last week. It's only 605000 I think we've I think we've kind of reached the end of the line. Another week to bid for coffee. With Tim Cook at Apple headquarters. Now, how much would know. you pay? I, th I think there are a whole bunch of people are waiting to snipe in at the last moment. It's going to be <laughs> they're, they're holding back their $2 million it's bid. A Russian billionaire question. just waiting to snipe. Yes. So, uh, currently, the high bid it was, uh, it's now J star, 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 N, which looks like it's a, he's obfuscating his name, but actually, that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is uh, the current high bid he bid uh, Monday. He bid six hundred five thousand dollars. It was a f more than a week after ten days after the last high bid. So I you think you're right. I think everybody's kind of waiting. Or we've really hit the end of the line. This is in benefit for the RFK Center for Justice and Human Rights donation. You, you, gotta, you, you gotta figure that like someone who has six hundred thousand dollars to spend on coffee with Tim Cook, he can probably find another ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> no, like not like this is oh, oh it, it would be stupid. I'm, I'm I'm bidding six hundred thousand dollars because it would be stupid to spend more than that. Look in your couch cushion, dude. You could probably find ten grand. Look, mother said six hundred thousand and not a penny more. <laughs> I love and it, that, and that has to be my birthday and Christmas <laughs> present this year. I love it. <laughs> um, I said there'd be Steve Jobs news. There is. It turns out, uh, according to. Uh, an article in Network World. It's a new book's coming out about the 2012 presidential campaign. And in it, uh, Jonathan Alter, who is, I, I've always liked him a lot, a good writer. He's a political columnist now at Bloomberg. You've seen him on uh, M NBC. Tells of Steve Jobs personally ordering, ordering that Apple ads be removed from Fox News. He held Fox News in such low regard. In fact, he I think he talks about uh, in the Isaacson biography, he talks about uh, Fox News being a blight. and uh, he, he talks about how he had a conversation with Rupert Murdoch. This is from the uh, Isaacson biography. You're blowing it with Fox News, Job told, Jobs told him over uh, dinner. And it's interesting. It's not about – Jobs is not saying I'm a liberal and Fox News is too right-wing. He's saying the axis today is not liberal and conservative. The axis is constructive, destructive, and you've cast your lot with the destructive people. Fox has become an incredibly destructive force in our society. You can be better, and this is going to be your legacy if you're not careful, Rupert. But what's interesting is he pulled his ads off of Fox News. Um, this this uh, same article points out that PBS is still advertising on Fox News. <laughs> Here. So... Uh, I don't watch a whole lot of Fox News. Is there are there a lot of those like prestige brands advertising there? The, the only the only time I get to see it is when like I'm working at the Dunkin' Donuts that keeps Fox News on the big screen all the time, and I always see ads for you know Mercedes for your survive for your survi survival bunker only gold <laughs> bullion. There are a lot do. of gold ads. There's a lot of cash for gold. There's a lot of that. Um, but no, there's Mercedes Sprints on there. There's some big brands. Uh, somebody on Reddit responded to this story uh, and said. Uh, he's a media buyer and that Fox News is on the do not buy list for some major brands. I think you probably do kind of want to stay away from anything that's going to be hot, a hot button. Wh however you feel about it, you, you, you anything don't... Anything that gives you free, whose audience will give you a free dose of alienation no matter which way you swing? Yeah. You got to figure that they're, I mean, that MSNBC is on a lot of those lists too, though, right? I oh, mean, absolutely, I would one figure. One is far to yeah. the right, one's far to the left. Why, and so why do you think CNN has, has decided to... Hue to the middle, right? That's where yeah. the money is. Not the ratings. Like one network like Canada, then you can't argue over them. Just one network. <laughs> that would save so much trouble. Yeah. CBC, baby. You get the Queen's network and you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Does the CBC have a position on Stephen Harper? I, I don't know. Are we, I don't. I, I stopped to. watching the news. 
Yeah, I don't watch the news either. I watch tech shows. The news raises my blood pressure. And I finally uh -huh. realized that if you're in a world of whatever, what is it, 8 billion people, you can find bad things happening almost all the time. And so, you know, that's what you're <laughs> going to see if you watch the news. Bad things happening all the time. It's bad enough, I'll see it on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know, I stopped looking at Twitter. I, re I have a Twitter button on, on the front of my phone, and I used to, like, check it pretty religiously. And I stopped looking at that, too, because it also raises my blood pressure. <laughs> pretty soon it's angry birds, and that's And even the pigs are making me angry now, so I don't even know. I don't angry know. Angry Leos. <laughs> we have some that's plants. The versus... gamification of a, that's yeah. the gamification of the Facebook thing that you're talking about. Angry Leos, angry Renees, angry everybody. You yeah. just turn those, turn those little chat things into something you can knock over the things over with. Outrage. Turn on your phone, they're arguing amongst themselves. I need, I need, a, new, I need a new... Hey, you want to talk outrage? Uh... I not you know let's let, this is a good one I want to do this on the radio show Apple uh with this 17 billion dollar bond offering we talked about it uh last week largest bond offering in history uh the whole thing and you explain I think it was you Renee who kind of explained that by borrowing money they actually save money in taxes it turns out 9.2 billion dollars in taxes and an additional 100 million dollars a year in interest deductions um, is there outrage over this or are people just saying, Hey, that's the way the law is. They're taking advantage of the way the law is. Outrage that Apple's buying bonds instead of repatriating all their money and paying taxes on it. Yes. I don't, I, I have a hard time speaking to the vagaries of us tax law, but you know, some people say that the U S government should do more to help companies bring money back. And some people say that companies should be doing more by paying more taxes. Well, and the money's they, offshore in the first place. Yeah. Uh, to save taxes. Yes. That's what Google does, too. They channeled a lot of their uh, intellectual property and licensing to Ireland because the tax law was more favorable. Corporate tax law was more favorable. And I believe almost at least tons of high-tech companies that I know of do exactly the same thing. And almost every law that you write, people will spend time figuring out how to get around that law that, you written, that right. you've written. Um, so Apple's just is playing the game as it's set. I you can't really blame no them, right? No, but no. I think that a lot of these blogs are trying to gin up uh, a, a little uh, outrage, but I don't it's think a it's a good story. It's a, but and it is. If you think about nine point two billion dollars in taxes, Apple won't be paying by doing this. Um, but hey, it's the law. And what's a hundred billion dollars repatriated? That thirty thirty billion in taxes? Yeah, yeah. That's taxes are not though. I mean, how how much better is it to get somebody else to give you money to give to somebody else? <laughs> I mean, Apple, Apple has a lot of money, but they want to give money back to shareholders. So they come up with this plan where they're like, I want to give people a lot of money, but I want to use your money to do it. It's very and clever. People are like, yeah, sure. Take my money because you're going to give me more later because right. it's not like they're going to stop making money. So, I mean, even if it doesn't save them a dime on taxes, if they still get to sit on $144 billion right. and, and give away billions of dollars to other people, that's awesome. I wish I could come up with that. <laughs> I uh, I don't understand any of this at all, and that's why I don't do my own taxes anymore. But I watch, you know, what Lisa, who runs the business, and others do. And uh, there's a certain mindset, and these guys are very smart. And they're always thinking of uh, ways to take advantage of the way the laws are structured to save money. And I don't think that's wrong. Maybe we should change the laws. Or the nature of companies. Yeah. I mean, they're, they, they have, it's again, their job. They have one job. Yeah, it's their, their job is to create shareholder value. Yes. Yeah, not to pay taxes. If they didn't do that, it would be uh, they would be violating their uh, f you know fiduciary uh, duty to the shareholders. Oh, here come a whole bunch of new Tim Cook must be fired. Uh, posts. <laughs> the, the thing that the thing that really gets up people's noses though is when you see companies that even the situation that they're in right now where they can produce these huge huge moves that's not enough for them they want to continue to rewrite tax code and rewrite uh, structure code to make sure to give themselves even more advantages so if if apple were doing things like that if they're lobbying to say that we are going to redefine our employee pay as maintenance to physical plant structure because unfor because that, that, that there's a there's a better way for us to to write that sort of stuff off then yeah it would be a scandal but no i mean if <laughs> what 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 is what I, there, I believe there is a there is a there is a charming young person colloquialism about how we are to not place our fault upon the play uh but upon the <laughs> game itself <laughs> i believe that has some relevance yes. for our discussion today yes do 
Blame the. It, 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 was, it was far pithier. It was on the yeah. television. There was lots of people dancing around doing all those moves with the hands. I was quite distracted. Jazz hands. You know where they're giving that extra money to? The 50 billionth app downloader. Na, na, na. So we talked about this on iPad today on Thursday. Now, and I'd like to know what you think. There's a counter. Apple's counting down to 50 billion app downloads. And there's a $10,000 gift card in it for you if you're the 50 billionth. And then I think some hundreds of other people will get uh, some money. I think they could have gone to 50 grand. If you're 50 billion apps, you know, it's, Apple's not a poor company. They could have done, you know, a big showstopper. 50, 50, 50,000 in iTunes bucks. You'd never spend it your entire life. Okay. So my somebody's, question is... Somebody's going to get $10,000 without even realizing they're in a contest. There's no need <laughs> right. for 50 billion, right? Somebody's going to download... That's Angry a lot Birds of for the first time. How many episodes of Mad Men is that? <laughs> yeah. My question is, can they really know the 50 billionth download? Hmm. They've got a counter right on the website, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. It seems like that would be a hard thing to know. Now, somebody says, no, no, they number every transaction. Every transaction has a sequential number, does it? I don't know. In the movie, Will Ferrell steps over the plug at that exact moment. It's about to hit 50,000. <laughs> I think, uh, and by the way, you can also enter. You don't have to buy. You can you can send them a postcard or something. Mm. Uh, limit 25 entries per person per day. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that really, that, you really give me an idea that I'd Wait love to know exactly how these sort of contests are run because you're correct. How, how do they manage the things where someone will... Uh, how, how do you, how do you really judge an app and an in-app purchase? How do you really get to that actual metric of yes, this is it's not the person before it, not the person after it, and then how do you judge postcards coming in and how yeah. do they weigh yeah. against it? There there must be I know that for uh, for contests that are run by national contests that are run by large corporations, they actually have contractors out. Oh, yeah. who know how to who because there's so many legal angles in oh, and yeah. out because you you will get a class action suit just for entertainment value from someone who doesn't think that well I according to my calculations that the, the the winning app was actually the 49999999 millionth uh, 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 uh app downloaded I, i'd really like to i'd really like to know how that works well here's my here's my reason i mean yes of course you could number things sequentially but there's so many apps being purchased all the time i don't know how many it is but i would guess that any given moment there's 10 20 100 a thousand apps being bought all at the same time and so you can't really say yeah. there's a sequence they're they're not they may be separated by milliseconds, but but I bet you even within any given millisecond, there are a number of transactions. So I was looking at the rules to see if they clarify. They must say somewhere was, winners chosen at random from a group of people. All I saw at the top was persons located in the province of Quebec, Canada are not eligible to participate what? in this promotion. And that's why, because Quebec understands it's a scam. <laughs> it does say on the on the page counter for illustrative purposes only. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so so that's just an imaginary JavaScript counter has. But I screen capped it. I screen capped <laughs> it when I downloaded. <laughs> anyway, somebody's gonna get some uh, some so money. It, so it sounds like a pitch for comedy starring Kevin James. Yes. Well, you would think that there's somebody like I set up a boiler room buying apps. But that's probably why, by the way, it's only $10,000. Think about it. If they make that price too high, then somebody does do that. But it's an iTunes card. I don't know. Like, what are you going to do with 50000 iTunes dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was actually thinking, so if somebody who just sends in one of the entries but doesn't want to download an app wins the $10,000 iTunes gift card, that's going to upset a lot of people. Well, because I mean, part of the matter. Yeah, part of the real value of this is uh, to the app, the, 10, the 550 billionth app. Remember, the first time that it is, it was the millionth app and it was bump. Yep. And I still remember that. And that gave Bump a big bump. Yeah. The bump bump. But but there's but there's also the cost of winning. Like it, it's, re realize that of course this isn't this is <laughs> this is not a, exactly this is essentially an a, a, an opportunity to purchase ten thousand dollars worth of app store content for like probably three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars. Right. right. Yeah. And I'm not sure that I like Renee said, I'm not sure that they have ten thousand dollars worth of things that I want. Even even if you do throw in all the music, even if you do throw in like all the two, I could. I, I, it would be a real Brewster's Millions sort of thing where it, it would be easy as pie to spend the first two thousand dollars. I could probably find another thousand or two thousand dollars to spend. By the time like I get to seven thousand dollars, it would be like, 
fine. Uh, ev- everything with an accordion in it, and I whatever. I just want to spend the rest of this. I don't want to have to deal. But with you do. You pay the taxes up front. You pay the taxes yeah, now yeah. on the yeah. on the ten thousand you might spend later. And then you end up brokering this off to some two bit intermediary. My advice, if you win, it's, 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 that, it's that kind of commercial that's on Fox, like when I'm watching, like, <laughs> a broker, you want to get the whole value of your $10,000 iTunes gift card? Our operators are calling down for free consultation. It's business. It's, we it's buy iTunes. Activity. Yes. I just would buy a bunch of donuts and tapped out, and I never have. <laughs> <laughs> the largest donut purchase in the history of tapped out. <laughs> well, that that would that would almost that would almost be funny and worth it. Like to to <laughs> to simply say, I'm going to spend this all to completely crash the economy of one game. Uh, that's I'm a find good idea. One multiplayer yeah. game, and basically say, no, there's no, I will be the god of this of this online game because <laughs> nobody can outspend me. I will, I will, I will like, you know, if, if I find that someone's farm is doing really well, I will put like eight, like physical, like nuclear reactors around it to kill it off. I will be the Mr. Burns of, of, of this town. Ruin every Zynga game ever made. <laughs> uh, or just offshore it. And then you don't yes. have to worry because the taxes are paid by somebody else. You have to win your iTunes gift card offshore. That's the trick. Set up an offshore corporation now to buy those new apps. We're going to take a break, come back with more. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. I want to get the rumor rundown. We we have to start a new segment, an iMore rumor rundown. Yeah. We'll, we'll get timpanies and horns, <laughs> have a special open. Also from uh, Mac OS Ken, Ken Ray is here. What You, you do this daily, daily news uh, for yes. the Macintosh. Highly yes. recommended. Anybody who's uh, into the Mac and isn't listening... Ought to. Well, it's, I mean, I, to be fair, it's Apple. It's been a long time since anybody yelled at me about that, but I used it to should, get complaints. Well, we're Mac Break Weekly. We should really call it, app, you know, Apple or iPhone or something. I Break Weekly? I Break Weekly. Well, there's, there's very little clam juice in Clamato, and yet they still call it Clamato. <laughs> I, think, I think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> bloody Caesars are better than bloody men. <laughs> and then day six, tell me about that, Ken. Oh, that is um, a premium thing for people who listen who want to help support uh, the daily deal that is Mac OS Ken. So you're free so, for five days. Yes. And the sixth and day. The sixth day is something else entirely. In. It's it's interviews and sort of um, longer considerations of stuff. Like we just, this past weekend, talked to Allison Sheridan from uh, the NoSilicast and Dave Hamilton from the Mac Observer and Jeff Gamet also from the Mac Observer and Chuck Joyner from Mac Voices. And it was just the four of us having this, uh, well, four different conversations, just wide ranging, weird sort of thoughts on the future, which, so it's not always, I mean, sometimes it's big interviews and sometimes it's a, it's a bunch of friends getting together and saying, yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> so, but it's a great, it's a great idea because so you give away the five days and you make your uh, living on the sixth and it's a way for people to support you. And I think it's great. If you go to macosken.com, you can find out uh, more. And here's the if uh, the day six uh, thing, right there. It's up there. That's hey. that's well, that redirects to the old site, so yeah. that needs to be fixed. You Thanks. moved to you moved to, you moved to Squarespace. <laughs> I did move to Squarespace. Good man. They came on as a um, they came on as a sponsor a few months ago, and you know, so I was prepared to talk really nicely about them. But now I'll talk nicely about them any chance I get, whether they're sponsoring or not. We have a Squarespace ad later. You can <laughs> actually, I'll do it right do now. Well, Why don't we right. segue into that right now? <laughs> Why wait? Uh, yeah, they're great. You know what's great? They're, uh, the, the thing I like about Squarespace and those guys is that they support the podcast community big time. Yeah. And, uh, and they've been a huge support. We've been, they've been an advertiser with us for a couple of years and a huge support, one of our biggest advertisers. And I like it that they, they believe in and give back to uh, the community. Yeah. And, I mean, can I talk about them? Yeah. So how's second? your experience been? Love it. The the level of control that I have, I, I had a website. I had I've had two. Well, this is the third version now of the Mac OS Ken website. The first one was done by a friend of mine. It was done in about fifteen minutes. Um, she basically set me up with something that I could update every day. And then another friend of mine, like about a year and a half, two years later, surprised me. Just totally redid my website. I mean, I mean, then got my permission to change it. He didn't, you know, just I didn't wake up one I'm day. I'm going to redo your website. <laughs> And then, you know, so he got really busy. Like, it turns out he got a life and a job and ended up being part of a successful mm. company. And so he didn't have, you know, the time to go in and change stuff anymore. And and so basically I sat with the same website for about four years, which was probably three years longer than I should have. Um, 
just because I would have ideas of things I wanted to change and I would get in touch with him and then, you know, it would take months. Right. And and that's not harshing on him. He did a fantastic, you know, did a fantastic thing and now he's doing many more things that leave him with less time. And the cool thing about Squarespace has been anytime I have a new idea, it I, I always think, okay, so I'm going to set aside an hour. I'm going to go in. I'm going to put this together. And then I've got 50 minutes left over because everything has been so incredibly easy with it. See, I sound, I sound like a, I sound like a believer and it's because I am. I think you are. So, yeah. Plus, so if everybody goes Henry. right now to macosken.squarespace.com, what would normally bring any other site down would have brought the old site down. will not bring this site down because Squarespace is, you know, kind of the best hosting out there. Um, and it's because I believe that the content management system is so tightly tied to the hosting software that they can do this. It's, it's all done with virtual servers in such a way that if any site starts to get very, very busy, automatically more bandwidth flows to that site. So you just never see, they're always responsive, always fast. You never bring it down. Do you, have you used the new commerce feature yet? I have not used the commerce feature. So you could start using it instead of say PayPal for, uh, the, uh, sixth day. You could, you could, yeah. you should. <laughs> you never thought of that, did you? So here's no, I'm, I'm, I, I, mean, I witnessed the fact that I had the same site for four years, three and a half years longer than I should <laughs> it's have. It's one of those things you'll get around kind of to. Guy, I know, right? I know. That. So at some point I will. This is a Maybe nice new that. feature of Squarespace. So visit squarespace.com. One of the nice things about uh, Squarespace is very easy to try it. You don't need a credit card or anything. Just go there and you get two weeks free with all the features. You can try all the templates, gorgeous stuff. See how easy it is to customize it. Every site looks unique on Squarespace because of that. Um, and then when you decide, I want to, you know, maybe make this my own home, you should really take a look at the pricing because it's very affordable. And one of the things somebody like Ken could do is sell stuff because they've added this Squarespace commerce and it's great. They, they set you up with a merchant account. You don't have to have a merchant account to begin with. Um, they, you can sell digital goods like, you know, day six or physical goods like CDs or books. Uh, and the pricing is kind of amazing. They don't take any of your uh, sales. Uh, the basic plan is $8 a month when you buy an annual plan. The unlimited plan, which is the one we recommended for a long time, the $16 a month gives you unlimited bandwidth. That means you never get a bill because you got popular. Unlimited storage, unlimited pages, galleries, blogs. But then for $24 a month with the annual plan, you also add e-commerce to that list. Unlimited physical, unlimited digital products. You get a mobile store. They do tax. They do shipping. You can have coupons. You know, if you wanted to come on this show and say, I'd like to give 10% off to everybody who uses the offer code MACBREAK for, you know, day six, you could, do, you could do that. You could literally set that up while you're talking on the show. It's that easy. $24 a month. And they don't take a, a cut of your uh, uh, sales. That's it. When you buy the annual plan, $30 if you want to go month to month. They also offer that. And I've got a way you could save 10% off that first purchase, which is probably why you want to get the annual purchase. Oh, one other thing when you get an annual plan, they will, and you should do this, Ken. I know you're doing it as a spiff to them. It says macoscan.squarespace.com. But you can also have the domain, the custom domain name, and they'll automatically hook that up, and they'll set it up for you for free when you buy an annual plan. I want you to try it free. Um, since they just did the platform upgrade last fall to uh, Squarespace 6, now they're continuing to roll out new features integrations, new templates, this commerce. This is a company on the move, and, and you're going to be very, very, very happy. Squarespace.com. Oh, they added a, they just added a new calendar feature. I forgot to mention this. The events collection that lets you share schedule updates. So, Ken, you could have, spe you know, you could have your schedule on there of who's going to be on day six, band tour dates, store sales events. There's a new template called Momentum. I should show you Momentum. It is so beautiful. Here's how you can try the templates. You just click the Get Started button, and the first thing it'll do is, is say, okay, pick a template. And you can see all these great-looking templates. I mean, they're just Ishimoto, Hudson. Where is uh, the new one? Where's Momentum? Get out of there, Charms Bar. I'm talking here. Is that it? Montauk. Anyway, the new, uh, the new template is out, and if you can find it, at a Rondack, Flatiron. By the way, these are just the... There it is. There's momentum. These are just the starting points. And what's cool about this is uh, you're going to customize it so it's going to be absolutely unique. These are all built with momentum, and they all look different. Momentum is a very cinematic uh, display. It's all fl full bleed. So if you're really big on the imagery, you're going to like this because the site just is all picture. 
really nice. They've got a layout engine that uh, lets you customize pages in seconds by adding blocks of content like photos, videos, text, social media. It's all, what I really like about it, it's, it's all mobile responsive. So this looks great on a high-res full screen, but also can look just as good on an iPhone. Squarespace.com, when you use our offer code MACBREAK5, you'll get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. That's monthly and annual, but get annual to get the best savings. Then you only do that when you buy. You can try for free. MACBREAK and the number 5 for the fifth month. Squarespace.com. OS Ken certified. That was a long ad. Sorry about that. <laughs> I get a little excited. Mac Break Weekly, where your ad dollar stretches far. Yeah, they really do. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Consumer <laughs> Reports says Apple's numero uno in customer support. Are we surprised? Not really. No. Um, you can, I don't know. Am I allowed to show the consumer? I don't think I can. Consumer Reports is funny about that. Um. Apple topped its score from last year when it was also number one. Uh, Consumer Reports in their press release. I can quote that. The company scored far higher than the other big companies for the elements that make for successful online and phone support. Ease of contacting staff, clarity of advice, technical knowledge, patience, and time for follow-up. I'd agree with that. I think Apple's very good in that. It's the last. But that's part of why the, the pay the Apple tax. You know, PC, I got to point out, you know, PC margins are so razor thin that's why pcs are so cheap they can't afford to give you good tech support that costs money it ain't free you can afford to give you a button that turns off your trackpad but they can't afford <laughs> to give you i feel kind of stupid now i was bitching and moaning before the show because i couldn't get the trackpad to work and somebody in the chat room said you did did you push the button that turns it off i said oh where's that oh yes i did i eject whoops <laughs> oops Apple has uh, updated the iMac lineup. There are uh, new storage uh, options. You can get a 256 gig flash or a 512 gig flash drive. I think that's great. I only buy flash drives now. And this is on the iMac. I yeah. I have a Fusion drive on my 27-inch uh, uh, iMac, and I like it, but it's still not as fast as a pure flash drive would be. Do you think we're transitioning towards a, 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 a towards a destiny where Apple's going to make it easier for you to get to buy flash storage and hard drive storage? Even yes, if it increases the cost of everything. It's all anybody wants. It, and Apple does charge a premium. Uh, uh, your Mac comes with a fifty four hundred RPM one terabyte drive. That's pretty slow. That's that's. I'm telling you, if you've if you've thought about this, it's worth the money to get the upgrade. You go from a one terabyte drive to a terabyte fusion drive. It's faster. It's 250 bucks more. For 300 bucks more, you can get a 256 gig pure SSD. $600 more, you get a 512 gig. So that's the problem is you don't get as much storage. I would rather see them, frankly, and this is what I did in my Mac Pro, have a very fast SSD for boot and operating system and then put the data on a spinning drive and not try to marry them together as, as with Fusion. Mm -hmm. What any, any Ken or, or Renee experience with Fusion? that you want to talk about? Not yet. I, I have not played with it yet. I'm waiting for all the next generation chipsets, much like yourself. Right. The, the, you know, I, I have it, and it, it's definitely faster than a normal spinning drive, but it's kind of unclear, and I've been reading some of the tech, more technical reviews of it, about how effective it is. The idea is that Apple will move uh, the most read files to the solid-state drive where they can be read faster, and the less read files will stay on the spinning drive. But I'm not convinced that it's really doing that much. And I think you, it's noticeable when you put a real SSD drive, especially if you have a Mac Pro, I put an Express Card SSD drive in. And man, does that make a difference. Mm -hmm. Zero to 60 in zero seconds. Unbelievable. I'd love to see like a cloud-based hybrid drive where... Because oh, that's if, interesting. If, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're afraid of the cost of... Uh, solid state storage you can get 128 gig and even 256 gig uh like swap replacement drives on amazon for just close to not not that much more expensive than a than a spinning drive uh and if you were able to if this were really intimate with a cloud service that could figure out that you've got about uh, for this for this mobile device you've got let's say a, a, an, an extra 
uh, 500 gigabytes of online storage, or you can put stuff on in the cloud, and we'll just simply figure out that, okay, he wants to open this. I'm not going to tell the difference between what's on board and what's in the cloud. I'm going to simply pull things down off the cloud as needed and guess that this is what he needs and what he wants to use the storage for. And as long as that was backed up with the idea of I can pin certain folders and certain documents to say that these should always be in both places simultaneously, it might be an interesting, interesting alternative. It's it's it does seem like every manufacturer wants to get into get into a, a place where they no longer have to go to the expense of uh, of physical uh, hard spinning hard drive storage and they can just simply print everything onto one board uh, in the manufacturing process and that's it. It also has the side advantage to the manufacturer of sort of making it more difficult to upgrade later on and sort of not forcing somebody to buy a new computer in two years, but at least making that more attractive uh, than uh, than holding on to what you got. Let's talk Haswell, because on Monday, yesterday, Intel announced its next uh, chipset, the Haswell uh, chipset, uh, which is a 22 nanometer uh, uh, x86 processor that's going to be available in PCs and presumably Macs soon. Um, Andy, uh, you said you had some thoughts about Haswell. I'm waiting. I, I really want yeah. a new MacBook Air. In fact, what I want is a MacBook Air with Retina, and I'm really hoping that the new Haswell... Sorry about that. The new... <laughs> Shut up. The Simpsons, they want me to clear up some snakes. It's, you know. uh, that the new has will be have enough juice to uh, make us, uh, give us a Retina Display MacBook Air. It's not the juice, though. The, the, MacBook, the Retina MacBook Air is waiting for in better battery life. Battery. I mean, there's just no room well, in that but case. The has, but that's what I mean. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean speed. I meant battery. Haswell is a low, much lower power chip right yeah. with better graphics performance might be well more not, it might it might not it might not be applicable to that that need haswell it's uh, when, when, I, when i talked about when, when i mentioned that i had things to say about uh, about haswell it's it's in the broader sense that uh, when you when you talk every time i've talked to intel and they, they come through boston and we have a nice long lunch and we talk about all kinds of things they're, they're fairly open with me about how they have a long-term strategy for cpu that's partly designed to fuel the next generation of ultrabooks no matter what it is they were f even fairly so, so Surprisingly, given the given the context, uh, open about even two or three years ago about where they were going with ultrabooks. They were saying that the first generation is not going to be great. The next generation is going to be a little bit better. The third generation is going to be better than that. And as they, they keep building new chips specifically for the purpose of creating really, really good, uh, powerful uh, machines that run on very, very little power. And now we're starting to see the real meat of what their of their of their chip strategy. So Haswell it now not only has graphics acceleration to allow a manufacturer to put more more content on one tiny little die surface, but also uh, power management that allows the CPU to go idle a lot more frequently than uh, than any previous architecture, any previous design. So it's not as the so the problem with uh, driving a Retina display while that display is alive and being driven, that's not going to save them any energy at that point. But it is going to uh, if if you have a, a if you're comparing to a nominal display, the amount of time that the CPU spends just waiting for you to do something, anything stupid human, uh, it, it's going to draw a lot less power. So this is a chip design that's going to elevate pretty much every different mobile uh, mobile PC that's going to be out there. It might even make it a little bit more difficult for uh, it, it'll, it'll make it much easier for Windows 8 notebooks to compete with MacBook Airs because right now, really, the only really great Ultrabook out there is the is the MacBook Air. You know, there's so many expenses uh, and inconvenience with going with a Windows based Ultrabook. Now, a lot of the stuff that needs to a lot of real real careful and integrated engineering uh, to make work on the MacBook Air is really integrated all inside this one next generation Intel chip. So it's going to make a lot of things work better. If Apple continues to embrace this platform, they're going to get the same benefits everybody else does. So let's see if it makes them, if it keeps the MacBook Air still one leap ahead because they'll have the, the great CPU plus all the correlated uh, engineering that goes into all the other components. The uh, Haswell's integrated graphics, according to Intel, will be cons about 200% faster than the last generation HD 4000 uh, graphics. That's, that's going to help with Retina. It is a yeah. better mobile chip for power consumption, considerably better, uh, according to Intel. Um, but do you think it will be enough? This article uh, at Cultimax says it will be powerful enough to drive a Retina display, but, it, but the battery life is going to be the issue. Yeah, I think for it wildly, your choice is going to be a fantastic MacBook Air, which already has, you know, pretty good resolution, or a Retina MacBook 
I mean, they're, they're, the reason the Retina MacBook Pro 13 inch is bigger and thicker than the MacBook Air is because of the processor and the stuff that they have inside it. And if you start to put all of that to. in a MacBook Air, the MacBook Air has to start looking like them, like the Retina MacBook 13. And cooling is another issue too. So you need actual physical space to get more air moving across uh, across the, the the circuitry. So but we'll get better Retina MacBook Air, MacBook Pros, Leo. Which you know I'm waiting for because when I when I press the expose button now, I can count to three or four before it moves. <laughs> you you sometimes feel as though you're actually holding down the shift key. As you're making these moves, <laughs> like, oh, nope, that's just how fast things go. Okay. Yeah. It's maxing out the current uh, Intel HD uh, graphics GPU, and the next one hopefully will give it a lot of breathing room. It's almost like every time Apple goes to Retina, that first generation pays this Retina overhead tax where the chipset can just barely keep up. And then when it goes to the next generation, it can start doing in second gear what it used to have to do flat out in five, and then it's just a much better experience. Yeah. I just think I think it's unfortunate that users don't have that option of going with just a, a normal display that doesn't have performance issues. It's a, it, it is a huge boon the the having that extra detail when you're doing all kinds of different production stuff. But I don't know. I wish I wish it were an option as opposed to nope. This is what the pro is from now on. So what should I buy? Should I? Okay. Well, I guess I'll know when we, when this happens. Is this going to happen at WWDC? Is it going to happen June seventh? The 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro debuted at WWDC last year, and Apple typically has some sort of a Hardware announcement. Once power the, user prop, uh, yeah. product. So if Haswell is ready and Apple's had time to integrate it and everything's working great, um, and they can, because Apple announces when they can ship within a relatively short period of time. Usually, yeah. they they when a new chipset comes out, Apple's one of the first, if not yep. the first company to, to to use it, right? Yep. From Intel, they they seem to have the inside track with Intel. Apple also, I mean, that's why Apple got IPS panels in the in the iMac before anybody else. They buy, you know, one set of things in huge quantities. A lot of other manufacturers buy a few of these and a few of those, and none of them are in tremendous scale. And it lets Apple buy things, that, you know, cheaply enough to get the economies of scale to do it all in one shot very quickly. Apple's has spoiled me, unfortunately. I've, they've ruined you, Leo. They've ruined me with <laughs> Retina. Yeah. And so while I want the lightness of the air, and I would love to see a, you know, quad core i7 air, which would be amazingly fast, great graphics, I kind of want the high res too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, in my opinion, uh, it's the MacBook Airs that need Retina most of all. I, I, I love the 11 inch air, but I had one for a couple months uh, to it's test too out. Small. Uh, it's just I, it's just too cramped. It's yeah. not it's not as though the screen is unreadable, but I really unusual for an Apple device. I feel the fact that this is a suboptimal display performance for this type of size display, and that's why if I were to buy one, I would probably go with a 13 inch. And I might even wish that I'd gotten I did. A, a, a thicker 15 inch machine. I actually had an 11, and I ended up getting a 13 instead. And I bought I their 15 inch Retina last year at WW, you know, after WWDC because I and I and I love it. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I'm. I'm pleased with people who say that once they start using a Retina, they can't possibly go back. I had no problem going back after I sent my loaner back. But yeah. But but if you're doing things like Aperture and you realize that, oh, I've not. I've. I've this is the hundredth ed photo that I've edited, and I have not zoomed in even once because there's no need to zoom in. I see so much detail. Uh, there, it's it nice. really does spoil you. Yeah. It's nice. How about touch? No. <laughs> on the, on I kind of like. I okay. So. The, I'm not a fan, as you probably gathered, of Windows 8, uh, but I do really like uh, touching the screen. I think that uh, there's times when you want to, maybe not on a desktop, but when on a laptop, you want to reach out and, and touch I think, it. I think that's inevitable. Uh, I, I don't know that there's any time frame for it, but I think it's inevitable that you'll see Mac notebooks and Mac desktops that have touch screens because, I mean, everybody, I'm sure almost everybody here and everybody listening to this has had that experience where they've come in from the car after using their iPhone and they the first thing they do when they want to, when they want to activate a window on their iMac is actually start touching the screen. I mean, this is when, when kids uh, define their first experiences with computers, our first experiences were with keyboards. You have to be a little bit younger than us for your first experience to be a keyboard and a mouse. And that was it for 20 years. Right. But now we've got whole generations of kids who are growing up thinking about touchscreens. So it's not, it's not that they, it's not that it's Thank impossible you, to do a good experience. Right? Well, it's not, not that it's impossible to do a good experience that way. But I think that the argument that people don't want to operate their computers like this is kind of uninformed. It's not that people want to spend three hours doing this, but they do want to when they're just sort of occasionally, like their hands are off the keyboard, they're just sort of futzing around. They do occasionally want to do this to do something rather than going center my key, center my hands on the it's keyboard. It's just natural. And yeah, I'm it, so it, used it, to it. And, I, and the natural who here has not now, because of using an iPad, 
touched at one point or another their MacBook screen yeah. thinking it's going to do something. Yeah. Besides, yeah. you know, get a weird smudge. It's 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 a little bit like it, I think Apple's attitude towards touchscreen on desktop mach machines. It's a little bit like people using the word literally in the wrong context. You can <laughs> say you can say it's wrong. You can say it makes no sense. But that's how everybody's talking now. And so you can either be the one person who I'm pretends sorry, not to it's understand grammatically what incorrect about. Yeah. to have a touchscreen. I'm and a tomato is not a vegetable, and a spider is not an insect. <laughs> in uh, I'm not sure when this is. It probably I'm thinking it's uh, 1998. What? And it, it, Chad just stuck this in the rundown. I love this. It's from thinkingbricks.com. This guy had a Hi8 camcorder when Steve Jobs introduced the first MacBook with Wi Fi. Uh, uh, he's picking it up. And he's walking away. Standing ovation as Steve uses his MacBook without Wi Fi. Yeah, and, and, the, and the crowd just starts to realize it more and more. And, and they get showing the screen. Yeah, they get surfing. more and more excited. And, yeah, they just all start freaking out. This is really good to see because we take this stuff so for granted. This was 15 years ago. <laughs> He's using a hula hoop to show no wires. It is a magic trick. We take this stuff for granted. It's really nice to see this once in a while. And you know he felt pretty good having Wi-Fi. I mean, you, you can you can see the little tracking markers on the corners of the screen where they could match <laughs> the video to that. I mean, we were so gullible back then. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I I look forward to seeing what they have next month. I I was about I literally was about to push the buy button on a 13-inch uh, MacBook Air, and then I said, <laughs> wait a minute, Haswell. Yeah. So wait, it's that certainly I think it's worth waiting. I, I, I agree. Anybody who's thinking about buying a buying a new notebook right now, who can possibly wait for the next generation of hardware, even if it does have to wait until January, I don't think it'll be that long. But that's how that's how big an improvement this new next generation of chips is going to be. And by the way, I somebody's saying this in the chat room, and I agree. I miss Steve Jobs. There, the keynotes oh, yeah. will never be that. No one will ever be that good again. When you see the horrid things that Samsung's been doing lately, and <laughs> it, you know, it's just, I mean. We really Next had time I see you, Leo, I have a great, great story for you about that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Private, huh? Yes. Uh, here's another uh, video for you. I don't. Is this, is this from PopCap? Hey guys, this is me, Francis. This is video is going out to the guys who make uh, the game Plants vs. Zombies. Are you guys making a sequel? You are making are, a sequel, right? are you not? When this new game's coming up, it seems like it's about time. Wouldn't most decent video games have a sequel out by now, right? Really, how much longer could it possibly take? Where is my Plants vs. Zombies sequel? I need it. I'm tired of waiting. Come on, you guys. That was Dvorak. It's taking so long. I need more plants. I need more zombies. Can't move by Tonight Kevin Smith. at 11, there, there is still no sequel to Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> ah! Ah! Release that game, PopCap! Plants vs. Zombies 2. I... Game for me. <laughs> is it Plants vs. Zombies versus Duke Nukem? Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies Forever is going to be the name of it. No, I am, I'm just dying uh, to get the sequel. They were giving away. I think they still are Plants vs. Zombies 1. Everybody thought, that's the signal. You're going to be able to get it. The greatest, in my opinion, the greatest iPad game uh, and iPhone somewhat of all time. And now they're saying July. Just in time for my new... MacBook Air with Retina display. <laughs> awesome. Um, Lightroom for the iPad. We saw a weird demo on Scott Kelby's uh, podcast, his Lightroom podcast. Apparently, he had an Adobe uh, rep on who kind of went off the reservation and started showing a very funky prototype. He was doing it on an iPad, too, which is even funkier. Yeah. Um Tom Hogarty, who is the group product manager for Lightroom, said, I, I'm not going to tell you when it's going to ship or what it'll do, but I do have something I can show you. And, and uh, raw photo format support, which is something awesome. No iPad app currently has that for good reason. Because, for instance, raw on my uh, Canon 5D is about 21 megabytes per image. iPhoto won't do it. Cloud synchronized editing. So if you're using Lightroom on a desktop, 
your changes on the tablet go right to the desktop. 100% yeah. zoom. I'd love to see it, but this demo is not. This is the grid. Scott's uh, show the grid. This demo is not going <laughs> to not going to impress anybody. For instance, all the telemetry on the, the, the that's what that green stuff is debugging info. <laughs> Yes, I, 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 the statement from Adobe that I can use <laughs> that I got is details on availability. Uh, uh, in regards to Tom Hogan, would please know this was a sneak peek look at future technologies and not specific product plans or yeah. news. I think he went off the reservation, frankly, but that's okay. <laughs> That's, that's good, and that's and that's quite useful too. I mean, one of the great things about the new Lightroom beta is that it tries to make it not important what device and what location you're using to edit your photos with, because it makes very very portable previews of everything you're doing. So if you were to take your MacBook Air away from your desktop and do editing for uh, for a few days and then come back, it would go back to right where you were and apply all the changes that you'd made to those previews to your hard drive uh, version of the library. So it's, it's certainly not unimaginable that they could do something on the iPad that would give you exactly that sort of functionality. There is a program and called Photosmith on the iPad that will kind of sync, but... Um and I, I'll tell you, there is something very natural about editing or at least picking photos and doing some basic uh, editing on an yeah. iPad. It's just so natural, and you're traveling. I did it when I was in Norway a year ago with iPhoto. I wasn't working with RAWs, kicks, I, but, it, but it just feels good, doesn't it? You just, yeah, just, it, it's, it's the natural, it's the, I think the iPad is the ultimate device for triage mm -hmm. that I love the, I, I love exactly. it to be able to dump my card into there, uh, erase the card and then use that to the good, bad, good, bad, keep throughout, keep, keep throughout, 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 throughout. Right. Uh, there's, because you're looking at essentially an eight by 10 color glossy photograph uh, of each one of these things. There's no better way to figure out what's worth keeping and what needs to be uh, gotten rid of. And you don't, and even if it can't edit raw, it will at least import the raw and keep it there so that when you dock your uh, your iPad next uh, the next time, you can at least get all those pictures off of the camera roll and into your uh, into your desktop library. So it's, uh, I, I can't believe we haven't seen a good raw editor yet for well, it because it's such a natural. As soon as Apple makes a 128 gigabyte, iPad. <laughs> I mean, you need the. You're going to need a lot of storage. I guess if you, you're but working with a 32 gig card, and you just and that's the one card you're going to use, you're probably all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, as soon as you have two cards, then you, the bets are all bets are off. Mm -hmm. uh, Renee Ritchie, I said we do a rumor update. Are I don't even know. Are there any good new rumors we haven't mentioned yet? Uh, I mean, it's the same rumors. Uh, we've got the low, the less expensive iPhone, the larger screened iPhone, the iWatch. Um, I'm starting to think the iWatch is not real. It's real. It just hasn't been turned into a product yet. I mean, Apple does. Right. If you can think of a product that Apple, you know, might be experimenting with, they probably do have it in a lab somewhere. And some of them never leave the lab, and some of them do leave the lab and get tossed around for the while. And some of those get made into products. Um, and it sounds like the iWatch is in that stage, but it doesn't sound like yeah. it's you're, like you're not going to see it at WWDC on Phil Schiller's shiny wrist. I wonder if you're ever going to see it. It depends on how the wearables market goes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's absolutely correct. I mean, the, one of the one of the first really exciting pictures I'd ever been shown that I wasn't allowed to to show with anybody to, to show anybody was an LCD tablet running Mac OS. Like I think it was even Mac OS eight. This is how how old it is. They basically took some sharp OEM hardware and ported uh, and, and ported Mac OS over to it. Uh, and it was like it probably didn't work very well. They probably figured out there wasn't much of a market for it, but. Like Renee says, they they design so many things, they build so many things just to see how it would work and to be ready if the market was ever ready for it. So right. the, the, that's why you always that, this this is I, th I think I'm saying something that uh, probably all four of us wind up saying at family weddings and, yes. <laughs> and other places a lot. Say, <laughs> well, they they're, they're, they probably are working on it. We don't know whether they're going to actually ship it or not because they have the wherewithal to explore pretty much every option. Right. Yeah. Hey, I'm, cake. I'm super excited. I want to say really quickly, I'm super excited about wearables, but I don't know if I believe that the watches what that's going to be. I think a lot of yep. people are going to pursue it. A lot of other companies, maybe. I think glasses but, are better than a watch for this uh, particular application. If we can yeah, get but, over the part of looking stupid, then yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of the problem. People are willing to put to wear watches because you're used to seeing those things. I don't right. know if people are willing to. I, I think I think you could talk people into wearing them as like a sort of special device for here is a situation in which you would want to wear these as opposed to use any other electronic device. But this is this is the place where you're going to find find wearables, not on not not on your face. I don't was know it, when you, the Google Glass makes so much sense. I, I got to finally try it with Scoble uh, on uh, Sunday, and it just makes so much sense because you're already looking, you know, and yeah. you just look up and you, and yeah. it's there. And it just, uh, it's a little more, I mean, you're right. You look like a dork. 
Uh, there are definitely some problems with it. It gave me a headache, but um, and I didn't even wear it that long. But I do think that that's a more natural place. And it's hard to – how much real estate are you allowed to consume on the wrist? Mm. Not a lot. I have a pebble, and it's kind of fun, but I wouldn't wear it every day. Still haven't got my pebble. I bought it the day that they put it on Kickstarter. It shipped like a month ago. I still haven't got it. I know, I know. Did, I, did, you, know. did you get the color one? No, the black one. Oh, yeah. They okay. sent me a note so, saying, "Our red, we're having trouble with red, which they now have. Would you like the black instead?" And I said, "Yes." Don't. It's not. It's by the time you get it, it'll be like. Uh, Look at the eye watch first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're but adding you, you, apps. You know, they're going to have a golf range finder now, and the, you know, eventually we'll have those, uh, you know, pedometer apps and all of that stuff. I just, I feel like that the watch and it's thick, and I, I just don't know how you make it a, a big enough dis display that it's useful. It's not touch. Well this, well, this is the sort of thing that Apple does really, really well, remember. I right. mean, there, look at, think about, I, I think back to all the rumors that were around about Apple making a phone, and no, nobody right. was able to guess, even, even though even though we had seen touchscreen phones before, even though we knew the technology existed, no one could really figure out that they would articulate a phone in that way. So that's why I'm, I'm excited about the idea of an Apple Watch, because I'd like to see them do a wearable computer that is as far removed from anything we can imagine as the iPhone was from what everything we could imagine back in, in 2006. Yes, I agree. Yeah, but everybody likens it to the Dick Tracy watch though which they were envisioning in the 1930s so I'm right. not sure that's I'm not sure that that's the kind of imagination that we're talking about I mean if can Apple do something interesting I'm sorry if they can ahead. do if they can do a watch that has like lightning bolts coming out of it and a little caption <laughs> two-way wrist radio every time we use it hovering <laughs> over it that's a hundred bucks I'm willing to spend that would be cool yeah or the you're, thing you're like right, in Ken, uh, like right. in one of the bad uh, Star Wars movies I think it was um whatever the third one was called uh, you know, they just hold that thing up, and there's a little uh, hologram, hologram of the emperor right there. Well, that, well, also remember remember that Lando Calrissian had a wrist computer for talking to Lobot in Empire Strikes yes. Back. That's how well, Lobot he was wearing the the prototype of Google Glass, right? Exactly. But I, I do I, I do I do see what you're talking about though, because I, I, last week I, I, last week I showed you those Sony digital binoculars that I was using that I was uh, I'm testing out, and I was I've been using I went to a ball game Thursday uh, Thursday night with them. I spent the entire day Sunday in the park uh, with them. And there's something of it's without talking about this specific product. There's something about the idea of having being able to look at something while you're taking pictures of it and while you're capturing video of it. Because normally with a camera, like you, you have to choose one or the other. It's like I can be shooting video, but I have to look at the screen or be happy with the fact that I don't know exactly where I'm going to be aiming this. Uh, if you have Google Glass, it's the ability to participate and observe while still being able to take a picture of it. And that's just one, I know that's just one feature of it, but if that's a feature that communicates to people, I mean, there I, I don't know I, I don't know a whole lot of people who've tried glass at this point, but I haven't I don't know anybody who didn't come away thinking, well, this is pretty cool. I don't know if I'll be buying it, but all oh, right. that was pretty cool. I got to tell right. you about how cool this was. We all have so much faith in Apple, and uh, and that yeah, they'll crack it. But uh, I haven't had that faith in a, in a in a while, and I and I don't know if they'll crack it. And I think it's pretty hard to figure out how. Remember when we were talking about the iPad, and everybody said, "Oh, we've seen tablets. It's not. It's terrible." And 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 we just kind of knew at the time. You know, Apple might have a way to make this work. There's some magic, some mojo. Um, I watched it, and it was just a big iPod Touch. Right. And it, but it wasn't. Yeah. In some weird way, it wasn't. Um, glass feels a little more like that. Glass is like, well, you know, I can actually, you know, this is uh, kind of there's something there. It's not quite there, but there's something there. I don't. I have a hard time thinking of what you could do with a wristwatch. It's like the Apple One or the Lisa of wearables. Yeah. Well, that's not what some. Yeah, that's what uh, I think. Uh, I think it was Tim Stevens. Or maybe it was Scoble who said that. That it, it was the Apple Two. It was Scoble. What, what who said if they? That. What if he, they were he felt the same way he did about the Apple II. You couldn't do anything really with the Apple II, but you knew this is the beginning of something big. But what if, what if Apple were to do this the same way they did Apple TV, where they knew that this was not something that people were necessarily uh -huh. ready for, but it was but but they were ready to sell it and ready to start showing it, yeah. and aware that they would get a lot of information from the people who were buying it and how they would actually be using it. What if they created a watch then? They they openly said it's another hobby for us. Right. And set the expectations thusly and said that, you know, this is going to be this is going to be a, this is a, a, a $250 device. Uh, it only does these four things, but it does those four things extremely well. It's the wristwatch we all want that we at Apple want to wa want to wear. And for the first 2 years of this device, you would they would never they don't refer to it as a computer even once. They always refer to it as as a wristwatch, 
that could be an interest that that could be an interesting way for them to do a watch and not feel as though you know the the, the stock price is going to dip below God forbid uh, three hundred and fifty uh, after the announcement. Yeah. Only difficult part about that is it's not the same world that Apple introduced the original Apple TV in. True. I mean Apple. I mean look at all the rumors about the watches. Now every other company is saying, oh yeah, well we're getting into watches too, as if anybody has actually said that Apple is getting into a watch. I know. I mean it probably is a real thing. It really is happening someplace. But people are starting to move on the on the uh, wristwatch idea as if Apple has announced something. And even if Apple tried to downplay expectations, it's when did the Apple TV come out? Come out the original one, 2007. the big seven. Yeah, it's not 2007. I mean, Apple yeah. can't. If Apple came out with the iPod Hi-Fi today, <laughs> well, that was it, a I bad mean, product. It, it, well, it was a bad product, but it was a bad product that went largely unnoticed. People like right. us went and said, "Really." Right. That, yeah. You you got people and together for that. It had Steve Jobs. Yeah. It had Steve Jobs. Yeah. But this, I mean, I don't know that they could introduce uh, Although, expectations you know, low enough to not to not rock the world because everybody is expecting something a thousand times better than the Dick Tracy right, watch at this right. point. So even if you said seriously, guys, this is not that big a deal, people well, are still the, going to come out and say sucks. One 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 difference though is that. Uh, if they keep selling it as a watch, realize that there are people who will happily spend three thousand dollars for a really cool mm. watch because it's not—it's not only a functional piece of technology; it is actually something that they enjoy as a fashion thing. That's jewelry. And they, and yeah. they, well, well, but but yeah, but they—I I think Apple could have the wherewithal to simply to have functions that really, really work incredibly well and ah. be selling it as here is a fashion thing that's going to. This is not a two thousand dollar watch. Buy that two hundred dollar watch, <laughs> and also. And yeah, and, and there's also and there's also the possibility, and this is, I mean, we're the, the fun of talking about the watch is that we can all just sort of spitball things, and the fun of this, and what's interesting is that Samsung will probably rush a watch to market and it will be horrible. Other company, uh, Pebble right. will do a, uh, will do a watch. They'll continue to improve it, but it won't have the sort of awareness that anybody will look at your wrist and know what you're what it is that you're wearing. Apple can do this and simply say it's a wristwatch. It has exactly two functions to it, but it is the coolest two hundred dollar watch we think that you can possibly get. And they can actually sell that. And they can continue to sort of add features to it and add features to it. If it just does those two things, and unlike the Samsung watch, does those two things so well that you're using it all the time for telling time and those two digital functions, they can certainly build momentum off of that. I think. You actually said something that triggered me because I imagine it to be clunky and ugly, kind of like the Pebble, thick with a, hour, a day's battery life and kind of an ugly display. What if Apple does exactly the opposite and makes it a beautiful piece of jewelry that has maybe limited functionality, but it's still a gorgeous watch? That I'd be interested in. So I just Apple don't want a clunky thing on my wrist. Apple does two kinds of products traditionally, and one is exactly the Apple TV, which enhances their ecosystem and makes their main products more valuable. And you can make a watch like that that shows you Siri cards or does a bunch of other things that makes the stuff you already have, like your iPhone and iPad, more valuable. Or they have products, which is like the iPhone, which is expected to sell in the hundreds of millions and be a, a leg in their entire business. And it seems like a watch, no matter what they do with it, given the constraints of current technology, is going to be exactly like Andy said, more like... The hobby and Apple is used. To, I mean, when App, when rumors of the iPad came out, Microsoft couldn't wait to show off the HP Slate at CES, <laughs> just to yeah. sort of prepend that argument. And when the iPhone was going to be a thing, people couldn't wait to show off their phones. And that's always going to happen. I mean, we had Google TV with 900 button controllers since the Apple TV launch. And I don't think Apple cares so much about that as in producing that product that does those two things and gets people in the door with whatever they think is going to be a market. And if not today, it'll be that Tim Cook pulling on the thread, you know, for the future. Now, now I'm suddenly intrigued. If it's a good piece of jewelry, I might, mm -hmm. I might buy it. No, I don't want, I don't want, the... I don't want the Casio calculator watch <laughs> that had a little tiny stylus so that you could type the numbers in. I'm afraid <laughs> it's that. I don't want anything that geeky. I want one that plays Epoch Man. <laughs> <laughs> no? You could play, right. uh, you could play Snake on the uh, Pebble. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard. Because it's so <laughs> tiny. I could barely play that on the G1. Yeah, I know. Press up to start. Which up? <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we come back, our picks of the week. Renee Ritchie from iMore. Mac OS Ken. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. I'm Leo Laporte. Our show today brought to you by Gazelle.com. It's true. When it's time to get the new gadget, you've got to. Most of us just end up throwing the old gadget in a drawer where it collects dust. You've got to take advantage of Gazelle. You can get a quote right now 
on your old cell phone or iPad or MacBook or Mac or iPod or tablet or your iPad, you can get a quote right now that's good for 30 days. And when that new tablet comes out, you'll be sitting pretty. They, they have expanded a little bit the number of tablets. They'll take Asus, Google. <laughs> I just wonder what a Windows, apparently a Windows uh, Surface RT tablet. Let's see how much I could get for my RT. <laughs> uh, let's see, Wi-Fi. I got the 64 gig. Let's get an offer. It's in good condition. I'm just curious. I didn't, they just, yes, I have all of the, I have a touch type cover. I have the power supply. Calculate. I paid 500 bucks. Yeah, I get 250 back. That's a good deal. Now, here's the best part. They'll pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck. So you throw that in the box and find some more old stuff to give them. How about the, you've got an old Samsung Galaxy S3. You think maybe I'm going to get rid of that for the next iPhone. You just pick it out of here. You get the, you get to say what the condition is in, it's in and you get your, your quote. Now, when you send it, they'll remove the data from it. They pay the postage. In fact, they send you a box you can throw it into. They remove the data from it, and they will adjust your quote up if it's in better shape than you thought it was. Right now, you get an extra $10 for your iPhone 4S. Take advantage of that. Again, their quote is good for 30 days. That means you can get the quote now. It's not going to, I can tell you right now, this is the most it's worth. Look at that iPhone 4, 16 gigs, 150 bucks. This is a great deal. Go to gazelle.com. Find out why now more than half a million customers have been paid more than $100 million for their old gadgets gathering dust in a drawer. You should do the same. Free shipping, fast processing, and you get the cash. By the way, a little pro tip. You can get check, PayPal, but if you get the Amazon gift card, they bump it up by 5%. Gazelle.com. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right, time for our uh, tips and tips. Picks of the week. Let's start with Andy and Akko. What do you got for us? Uh, kind of a side thing. Uh, some of you are familiar with uh, Jonathan Colton and uh, Greg Pak are teaming together to do a Kickstarter project. A comic based on Code Monkey Save World. <laughs> Code Monkey is, a, is, is his song. Uh, Code Monkey Save World has blown, blown through all of its goals. They were, they were seeking $39,000. They're up now up to $240,000. Oh, man. Um, they have expanded it to like 90 pages, including uh, all kinds of all, all kinds of bonus stuff. Uh, they have added a new stretch goal that is worthy of a second comment. Uh, it, now, if they exceed two hundred fifty thousand dollars, they will do a uh, they, they will do a uh, a children's book uh, based on the princess who saved herself, uh, which is another really it's a, a song that uh, Joko wrote for Haitian Relief uh, a while ago, uh, and it is exactly this the, the the story is about the title that you based in based in the side of the title. It is about a princess who sort of breaks through every single expectation of a children's story and just basically forms a rock band and say, say takes takes control of everything that needs that needs to be done on itself. Uh, and you get that plus Code Monkey Save World as digital downloads with a fifteen dollar pledge. Uh, so I. Uh, I I originally uh, uh, backed at the three dollar uh, level, but I, <laughs> I I I I happily bumped that up to fifteen. Uh, actually, no, I was already at the I was already high level, but yeah. Uh, this this is a this is a good uh, this is a good ex a good excuse if you're not familiar with this. To I think that's going to be fifteen dollars for the comics, uh, fifteen dollars for the entertainment. Uh, happily, happily, happily. And we just love Colton, and we just want to support him. And I and like Pack's style; it's good. I really like how this stuff looks. Uh, actually, that's not that's not his art. Uh, oh. He is a but he is an artist. He is a, a writer of some renown. He did uh, a transforming uh, run on the Incredible Hulk uh, at Marvel. He does a, and and he was the first writer I think that really got me into the X Men uh, after you know eighty years of reading these comics and not understanding anything and not liking anything. Uh, his 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 run is the first one that I really really enjoyed. Uh, so that's that's another name to know if you want to get into comics. But uh, the fact that the fact that he's writing this uh, and uh, uh, Takeshi Miyazawa, you're right. The the art is really really uh, really really he's terrific. Great. If you scroll down, the artwork on uh, on the children's book looks like it's going to be fantastic. Uh, if it, they, uh, I interviewed both of them the other day uh, about the project, and hopefully it'll make so much money that they will consider printing copies of this children's book because this seems like the sort of thing that you would like to, you know, sort of give away as gifts for people. Oh, so this this will all be digital, 
These were they're 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 printing uh, trade paperbacks and digital downloads of Code Monkey Save World. Okay. Uh, the stretch goal is uh, right now it's set as a digital download. Uh, they're consi they haven't announced it, but they are considering if it does super well that they will uh, do printed copies of it as well. Awesome. And, and 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 if you don't if you don't back the if you don't back the project, then it will also be available, I think, through Comixology for a regular purchase. But uh, don't you want to be one of the cool kids who back the project and? Instead of just some, to, to, to put to put on your scruffy beard and your fixie and say that, hey man, I was into this way before we hit Comixology. <laughs> For fifty dollars, you get coffee book, book, music bundle. You get the whole kit and caboodle, plus the digital downloads, plus the soundtrack of the Colton songs that inspired the yep. book. I mean, there, there's some there's some really cool uh, uh, bonuses here. Uh, the, the 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 more you put in, because uh, Ooh, challenge actually, coins, I code monkey <laughs> challenge coins. <laughs> They, you can get the you can get the resin statue, the painted statue. Uh, I think there's even a is there a concert one? I think for ten thousand dollars you will get an event with uh, Greg, Greg and Jonathan at your at your store or university or where, or probably your living room. Uh, for I mean, if, if I had my ten thousand dollar gift card for my tunes, I would probably spend it on giving having those two come and come for my house party. That would be a well that would be money well spent. They are so smart because. Uh, this is a this is a well done Kickstarter project. Just look at the uh, the various awards and you'll see this is how you do a kickstarter project yeah plus i mean i think i think it was guaranteed to reach its goal when you you know jonathan colton's fans they come out and they come out with their wallets open uh so i'm, I'm glad that this was funded like as quickly as it was and i'm glad that there's so many bonuses coming out yeah look at all these wow now i can't i have to shop a little bit i have to look at all the different <laughs> levels i really want those challenge coins <laughs> i love i'm in the challenge coins all of a sudden Mac OS Ken, you got a pick for us? I have something that I'm excited about. Uh, that's I all I care I, about. I can't really call it a pick yet, unfortunately, because I haven't read it. But I was just, um, just yesterday, I was looking, but I can't remember. I came across it in my news feed. Uh, John Lanier has a new book, Who Owns the Future? Yeah, in fact, um, I, it's so you, funny because I just sent that uh, press release to our producer to get Jaron on uh, triangulation. Oh, very cool. This is very yeah. interesting. Tell us about it. Well, I, I can't tell you much about it because I haven't read it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um but I mean, Jaron's become actually, a naysayer to technology. He's always kind of been, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it, he's he's a weird guy. I mean, you've interviewed him before. Yes. I know you have. Actually, oh yeah, I've met him I, many I times. Him, yeah. yeah, I interviewed him at um York Street. Is that where the yeah. studio used to be? Yeah. yeah. I interviewed him at York Street for radio back in the day and he he's he's a little cantankerous, but he is a big thinker <laughs> and he's somebody, you know, in fact, he may have been there for big thinkers, now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, he was famous for virtual reality. Yes. Uh, he was the first then, to really talk about what basically the Oculus Rift now does. And that was actually, I first saw him in 89. Yeah. He came to, he came to uh, Mass College of Art and blew my mind. And yeah. a friend of mine spent the rest of the day talking about how this could be both the best thing and the worst thing in the world. And, of course, it turns out. It kind of didn't happen the way anybody thought it was going to. But anyway, like so this past weekend on day six, I mentioned earlier all those people that we talked to. That was a large part of the conversation that we were talking about is who gets to decide what the future is going to be. And so then to find out that Lanier is already, you know, I mean, that he's written a book about it. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I don't, you know, every... Every big thinker like that, you you don't necessarily agree with everything they say, but I am interested to hear what he says. So it's available as an ebook all over the place, and who I assume in bookstores if you have any left. Yeah, who owns the future? It's his follow up to his uh, his book from two years ago. You are not a gadget, <laughs> which also was prickly. Very interesting stuff, uh, especially if you're if you're one of those people who says uh, as he does. Um, that Google is a little too intrusive, that Facebook is a little too uh, manipulative. You should read this. Good recommendation. Thank you, Ken. Uh, what, do you, what do you have for us, Renee? So I was in New York all last week, and part of what we were doing was a lot of videos and photos, and we had a videographer and a photographer with us uh, named Safe Solvent. That's his Instagram name anyway. And whenever we have an expert, I always like to find out what apps they're using. He's an iPhone user and he was always taking Instagram photos. And he turned me on to this app called KitCam. Um, and it's basically, there's a lot of great photography apps on the iPhone because the iPhone has a great camera. And, you know, there's Snapseed, there's Instagram. But what I liked about this is it put a lot of really good stuff all in one place. So you can take a photo. They have live filters for different lenses and for different uh, films. 
but it also has a bunch of post-process editing tools and you can go into levels and white balance and it, ha it does it for both video and for still photos. And it's just such a wealth of tools that I got a lot of what I usually do over several apps done in just one app. And then it also easily lets you share that out, whether it's to Instagram, you know, like everyone likes to do these days, or to an FTP site or to another app. Uh, and it just, the convenience of it, along with the care that it looks like they put into it, just sold me on it immediately. Wow, it's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, it does some really cool stuff. I love the live effects too. Yeah. Take advantage of that uh, processor in there. I don't know if it still is. It was on sale for 99 cents when I bought it earlier this week. It might still be. And there's some in-app purchases for additional film and lens packs. And they're all well worth it in my experience so far. What's it, what's it called again? KitCam. K-I-T-C-A-M. C-A-M. Thank you, Renee Ritchie. Sure. Our show today uh, is done. But you can <laughs> go home knowing you know everything there is to know now about the Macintosh, all the rumors, all the facts, what it really means, thanks to these guys right here. Mac OS Ken. Ken Ray, it's great to have you on always. MacOSKen.squarespace.com is the new site. Actually, if you go to MacOSKen.com, it just redirects. Easier. Yes. Easier. And more fun. <laughs> Ten <laughs> times the fun. Thank you, Ken. Great to have you once again. Thank you. Thanks to Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. That's where you should go if you want to find out what's going on. Crackberry.com, too. If you're I'll be at BlackBerry Live with them all next week. I'll be broadcasting live from the Crackberry booth, I hope, next week. Well, that should be interesting. Yep. I'll be curious what the spirit, how people feel at BlackBerry Live. You'll see me surrounded by black and orange, Leo. Wow. <laughs> where, is that, where is that event this year? Orlando. All right. Sort of last year, they had BlackBerry World and BlackBerry Jam, and it was two events. And I think this year, it's all one big Mush, BlackBerry Live together. event. Jammed together. Cool. Well, uh, next week we'll talk to you about the yep. future of BlackBerry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> try not to. He's oh. Canadian. He has to like it. It's, just, uh, it's in our contract. It's in the contract. <laughs> when you <laughs> when you sign up to be a Canadian. Uh, thanks to Andy and Anka, the Chicago Sun Times. What you up to these days, Andy? Anything exciting you want to tell us about? Uh, a couple of top secret projects that hopefully will come to fruition soon. Uh, but now, but the great the, 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 to uh, look forward to that uh, that uh, binocular review. Uh, it is, if, if nothing, it's getting me out of the house and getting me exposed to sun. Uh, tomorrow morning, early in the morning, I'm going birding with somebody. Wow. I've never been birding before, but I figure I got to try these binoculars out with it. So baseball game be, and birding, it's too much for one. Baseball week. in the park and birding, it's almost like I have a newly divorced dad or something. <laughs> dad, <laughs> can we go birding? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Always a pleasure. You can also hear Andy Anako's Almanac on the 5x5 network, 5 x 5 T. V. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. Do watch live if you can, but if you can't, on-demand audio and video available after the fact at twit.tv slash mbw. There's the t-shirt last few days if you want to get in on this. Uh, we do every month, uh, we do some limited uh, availability object. This will no longer be available. Don't, don't come crying to me next week when you said, I wanted that t-shirt. Still available, but just for a few more days. Five days and five hours left. $15. You could choose from Fruit of the Loom or um, American Apparel. Beautiful, nice T-shirts with a design by one of our uh, Twit crowd folks. or Twit chat realmers. Uh, just go to teespring, T-E-E-Spring.com slash Twit, and you could pick that T-shirt up today. Great gift for Mother's Day. For all the geeky moms out there. Yes, Ray DVD, we do ship to the UK. We ship anywhere in the world. But, of course, it's going to cost you more than $15 because we got to pay tariff and stuff like that. you find out about that at tweespring.com slash twit. Thanks for joining us. Back to work now. Break time is over.